Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. So this is my official response to Caleb Hammer because I met him for the first time about a week ago and prior to then, I'd been watching his videos, reacting to them here on the channel and you know, we've texted back and forth but I'd never met him in person before. And that now changed because he had me on his channel and had me dive into his finances and he told me not to hold back anything. He told me to be brutally honest and it was. And this was an hour and a half that we filmed and he included the entire thing, which I thought there'd be parts he'd be like, you know, Caleb, you know, maybe we don't want to put, no. He was absolutely shameless, including in the title. Fat guy refuses to stop eating out. So with that said, I wanted to share my own thoughts on the situation and give you some of the behind the scenes in terms of what was going on, what was going through my head and things that maybe you might have missed. So with that said, here's the video and we'll begin as soon as you hit the like button and subscribe. That's all I ask for. That's it. Thank you so much. And now let's begin. My name is Caleb. I'm 28 years old. I'm based out of Austin, Texas, and this is Financial Audit. This is crazy for me to be sitting here. It's crazy it's, for it's, me. It's nuts because I've seen so many videos and it's hard for me to be in this seat doing this on you because I would be on the other side of this. I'm not sure if you could tell, but I was really, really, really nervous about doing this. The issue wasn't so much me being on camera. It was the fact that like Caleb has such a presence and has such a strong show and direction that putting me in that seat just felt like anything I tried to do is like, oh, I'm trying to copy Caleb. And I don't want it that people are now like comparing me to Caleb or Caleb to me and thinking that like I have to act like Caleb. So it was hard to go on the show to be myself knowing that Caleb is the bar that everyone is going to compare me to, if that makes sense. You've carved out a really unique niche, I think, on yeah. YouTube. No one's really done that. Dave Ramsey has, but he hasn't taken it to the podcast he does the mini format. audits. Yeah. So what prompted you to get into auditing full on financials? So before we did this, actually, I came up with a bit of a like an outline in terms of how I wanted it to go. And I thought to myself, if someone sees Caleb's channel for the first time ever, and I just go right into his finances, they're not gonna know who he is, what his background is, how he got started. I felt like that was really important to put in the beginning so that no matter who you are, if this video is the first video you've ever seen on Caleb's channel, it's at least going to make some sense. I studied music composition in college. So when I would go to write music, I'd be like, okay, here's a piece of music that I wanna hear. It doesn't exist, so let me write it. Here's a show that I want to watch. Here's a conversation that I wish happened to me 10 years ago. It doesn't exist. I guess we should make it. And that's actually how I started my main channel because there was a lack of financial content on YouTube at the time. This was like 2016. And I wanted these topics about real estate, investing, building wealth, saving money, credit cards that just didn't really exist. Like back then it was really Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, some of Patrick Bat David, and Alex Becker. Those are the only four people really, well Dave Ramsey was on there, but uh, okay, five people. Those are the only really five people who were doing it at scale at that time. And I thought, you know what, it, it would make sense that someone else come in and share their own thoughts firsthand, someone who's a lot younger. And that's what I did. And same thing with this channel, the second channel. No one was doing reaction to finance content at all. But I saw channels like Cody Co. And I was inspired by that. And I thought, well, if he could do it for the commentary sector, I could do it for finance. And this channel immediately blossomed. So there you go. The amount of money that is coming in on a monthly basis isn't something that I would have dreamed about making in a yearly basis. What were you making, let's say, two years ago? Two years ago, $100,000 after bonuses. And what were you doing then? I was a product manager. The faster the come up, by the way, usually the faster the decline. I, I heard that a while ago. It, it, it's remained true for the most part. I mean, obviously you have some of these stars, like, they seem like they pop up overnight, but it was like years in the making to get to that point. But overall, I think longevity is something really important. And Caleb has risen really fast in YouTube. I think that'll continue. But just from what I've seen, usually, the faster someone comes up, the quicker people move on to something else. I don't think that's gonna be the case here, but it's just something to keep in mind. I'm always paranoid, YouTube is so fickle, anything could happen. Hour long videos, three times a week, the consistency yeah. that I see on your channel is admirable, man. I appreciate it. I did that for six years, the three times a week. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is grueling, it's grinding yeah. to keep that sort of schedule and have a backlog, like just in case you miss something, yeah. to Sickness have something else everything. you could post. Yeah, I had a lot of anxiety when it came to that. Uh, I would get panicked if it were Monday and I did not already have my Wednesday video done. I would, like, internally, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't focus on anything. It, it was all I had to do was get that Wednesday video done. Actually, come to think of it, there were like five years there where, I, where I, like, I didn't even miss a video. D that didn't even happen. The only times I ever didn't post were if it were on a major holiday where I knew views would be slow, 
or if a prior video is really getting pushed and posting a new video would jeopardize the algorithm of the prior one. Because usually, YouTube promotes the latest video in your channel and as soon as you post a new one, it halts promoting the old one. So I would just let the old one ride and then post the new one when that one was kind of like dying down. So beyond that though, I had a lot of anxiety. I remember once it was on, uh, I think it was Labor Day, and it was a really slow day on YouTube, and I, and I know it's slow because I watched the algorithm. I'm checking other channels to see what they posted, and everything was really slow. It was like half of what you know normally should be shown. And I decided not to post that day. I had the video ready. I decided not to post. The anxiety that went through me, and this was like four years ago, was like, it was so intense for me not to post that day. I, like, it was gut-wrenching. So, you know, I'd say keep the schedule while you can, and then when you physically can't do it anymore, <laughs> Maybe don't do three times a week, but that schedule, you could probably get a few years on that easily, depending on how he's scaling. It's hard for me to go through and be like, you spent too much money at, uh, at Jimmy John's because in the big picture, it really doesn't matter that much relative yeah. to how much you're making. Yeah. But in doing so, there's a lot of stuff that tends to fall through the cracks that you just don't care about that could easily be cleaned up. And that's been something that I've adjusted to too, is that I was so frugal where like every dollar would make a big difference. And, you know, not stressing about expenses has been something that has taken me a long time. I'm still not over it. Like, I'll go to Chipotle, see they want $3 for guacamole or two fifty. I won't do it. Even though I want the guacamole, I just don't think it's a good value. So from my end now, I don't really worry about the price tag. It's more so, am I getting a good deal? Is this a good value? Is the money I'm spending on this gonna reward me in the amount that I'm paying? I see uh, a mortgage, $8,000 a month. It's what I put towards it. I think minimum's like 7,200. What about property taxes though? Cause that's another good chunk. Oh yeah, well that's all that. included. Okay. So that's mortgage, property taxes, insurance. Why did you decide to buy? Cause it seemed like yeah. you went from- I know. That I think was a huge, huge mistake because his income scaled up so quickly. He goes right for a nice house, Renting the same house right now would be cheaper. He's very new to, to all of this. I think renting for the time being would have been the smarter financial choice and not to burden himself with such an expensive mortgage, especially if he could use the home he's renting purely as an office. So like he could stay during the day, work during the day in a nice house, go back to you know his prior condo, and then the entire expense of the rental could be deducted from his taxes. That to me seemed like a no brainer to do that. Get a house for a business and then live somewhere else at night. Like to me, that would have been perfect. If it follows the trend of the rest of Austin, I think this neighborhood in the coming years, you know, there, there's houses for sale, tear it down, build a nice new house. And then again, one zip code over, this is a $2.5 million house. See, here's the thing though. He's betting almost his entire net worth on the house. To me, that's very risky. And not just on the house, on the area of Austin, Texas. He might be right, but it's a big chunk of change to plunk down there, tie yourself up for probably 15 to 30 years, hoping the area is gonna go up in value at a time where values are already at their highest. I know that's a bad argument to say, oh, values are high and therefore they can't go higher. They could certainly go higher, but I just think it's too risky given the newness of the income. I also have to say is, is it's a newer, it's not a newer neighborhood, but no. this is like the only new house as we were driving up. I'm like, oh, that's gotta Again, be that's the inner, that's the, that's the loop thing I was talking about. So that was more of a play. I just, we'll see if it works out. See the play though would be buying a house that needs work that you could fix up on your own. I know renovating is terrible, but maybe you could buy the house that needs some work and then sell it 10 years from now to a developer who's going to remodel it. That's where I think the upside is. The upside's not in the house that's already done. Because then where do you go? It's downhill from there. Then you have to hope all of your neighbors redo their houses, at which point now yours is the dated one. So, you know, and you paid a premium for it. Give it about six to eight months, you're gonna be itching, you're gonna think, ah, I need some more space. The no. driveway is a little too steep, can't fit my Ferrari up there. It's gonna scrape when I'm I have a 2019 Jeep <laughs> Cherokee and I have no plan of upgrading, to be very clear. That's the thing about Caleb, though, uh, does not have like a designer taste, if that makes sense. Like. Cars are not of importance, watches are not of importance, fancy clothing not of importance. The importance, I think, for him, music, uh, his freshwater aquariums, I, I think food, he really likes food, and doing a good job with this. Did I say music? Maybe I said music already. But that's, that's about it. So I think as long as he has that covered, he's set. Do you finance the furniture? Zero percent, baby. So the logic behind this, yeah, please. We'll, we'll see. Humor uh, me. 
I, I personally like 0% financing or very low finances and uh, financing and then investing the rest. And that's just what I wanted to do with this. This made no sense to me. Uh, he has a balance of $7,700. Look at that, just pay it off. Come on, come on, man. You don't need this. You don't need to do this. It's, it's not bad. It's just like, why? What? It's not worth your time at this point. You're, you gotta put a value on your time. What's your time worth? That was a tough one for me, is really valuing, you know, what is that cost of, let's just say, an hour of, of work doing something? If I could spend that on the channel, making the channel that much better, the ROI I get on that hour spent on the channel, better than anything else I could ever do. So for me, it's like even, Going and signing forms for the Ashley Furniture thing with the money I'd say, I'd rather just work on the channel, get an extra video out. Like so many better things you could do. Like when you shop at Macy's, oh, would you like to open up a Macy's credit card? You get 20% yeah. off your first order. Got 50% <laughs> off my friend's mom working there. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> my, your friend's mom? My friend's mom is the store manager there, okay, so I got 50% <laughs> off. I, I love that. I got 50% off my friend's mom, though. Oh, yeah, I bet you did. I wouldn't be opposed to you selling. Really? Because here's what I think. When I th when I see this value in your payment, your monthly payment's $2,400 a month plus- The condo association. Okay. So what could you rent this place out Only $2,500. So, yeah. Everyone else has been saying no, thank you. So here's the thing, people have this misconception that, oh, you have a low interest rate, therefore it's a good investment. Okay, it's only a good investment if you know the property is gonna be going up in value and you could rent it out for more than your cost. Here's the thing though, his interest rate's really low. His expense is $2,800 a month, of that, maybe $600 a month, give or take, is probably going towards home equity. He's at a $300 loss in terms of what he could rent it for. So every month he's shilling out $300 to be able to get back about, uh, hold on, I'm doing the math here, $400 in equity, give or take, uh, after everything is said and done, not accounting for vacancy, by the way. So when you take everything into consideration on the place, considering vacancy, he's probably at a break even on this just to hold it. And then he's making this investment thinking, now I'm just betting on values going up long term on a condo where I don't own the land. Not a good investment. Despite the interest rate, this one does not cash flow, does not make sense to have. Too much risk, I get rid of it. That's a pretty decent cash on cash return. My only criticism is whether or not this is worth your time at this point because right now you got a cash cow and that would be your business yeah and so anything, well i don't think about this i've never thought about it since i purchased it that's good yeah but you will at some point the issue that i see is that even if caleb stops youtube at some point he's gonna look at this and be like oh, that's a hassle i wish i just got a bigger better asset uh less things to think about that that's what i kind of went through and all these rentals in San Bernardino, and they were all great. But it was like in the big picture, I'd rather like if I could snap my fingers and have one larger, better property, and I could get rid of all the other ones, I would. So it's a pain to have to sell unless the house and all this sort of stuff. So I think the position that he's gonna be in five years from now is drastically different from today. And I would almost prepare for like two years from now, what would he wish he had done? And I think the benefit he's getting from this is marginal. Uh, compared to everything else. And I think if he saved and got a really good asset, like two, three years from now, like a really big, nice property, like a big like apartment building or something like that, he'd be doing a lot better. And you're telling me you want to invest, you want to buy a burger? So cash flow opportunities, yeah. again, to get to that goal, what? It's so stupid because you have the cash flow right in front of you. Well, yeah. yes, but you're like, ooh, what, what, what's this over here? And maybe I could do this over here and buy, you know, arbitrage, this interest rate over here for a few hundred dollars. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is one of the most surprising things is that he wanted to spend so much money because I wanted to do a franchise a while ago. These things cost like, three to 700 grand because he's building this out from scratch. He's not going in and getting like a Subway franchise. He's going in and get like, he's being the first franchisee ever. You realize how much of a learning curve there is to recreate an entire restaurant, do it again, and hope that people that go to one, go to the other one. It's not, it's not a proven model at all. If he said he wanted to do a Subway franchise, I'd be at least more open to it because there's a very clear outline in terms of what works, what doesn't work, you know, all the operations, they, they help you through it. Something like this, he's gonna be the first ever franchisee. Bad idea, so much money, why? You have everything, you, you have a winning lottery ticket and you wanna make a side bet, yeah. betting that lottery ticket that, oh, maybe I could do better over here. Yeah, exactly. Here's the part of the franchise I really don't like, in addition to the cost, which 
financing the cost of a restaurant build out, he's probably looking at 12% on that, unless he pays with cash, in which case he's depleting all of his money, he's selling stocks, he's getting rid of things to be able to do this. But the lease payment, you're stuck in a lease regardless of whether or not the business is successful. If he loses money, he still pays rent. If he makes money, He's still paying rent. He's paying rent no matter what. And he's paying rent for as long as he signs that lease or until they could find a new tenant to sublease it, which, you know, good luck on that. Here's the thing. If YouTube dries up, you definitely don't want to be tied to a franchise that's a, a coin flip of being successful or not. Yeah, I mean, I made a good point there is that, uh, you know, if you're worried about an income drying up, you can't rely on a startup company that has a high likelihood of failing to support you in that. Like, that's the last thing. If his income went to zero, you bet he wouldn't be like, all right, let's do the franchise. It'd be so against that. There's, There's a lot be... of shows I want to do, actually. That's yeah. why I brought on the, the two people over there. Yeah. Uh, so that I'm able to spend more focus on the, you know, planning out some other things we want to do. So when yeah. we get the studio that we want to do, we want to have different sets for different shows we want to do. Yeah, see, Caleb's great in front of the camera. I feel like that's his strength. That's the one thing he's going to take with him no matter what he does. He's got good camera presence. So I think if he leans into that, other formats, other shows, uh, over time. I wouldn't make any abrupt changes, but I think over time, over the next few years, I think it's worth it throwing some other stuff into the mix. There, there are fantastic investment opportunities out there as well, but I'm worried. I don't want to see that distracting you from sure. what I think. This is so unique. You've got something here, and I wouldn't spread your time out anywhere else other than what's important, which is this. I completely agree with that. I think it's easy to get distracted when you see the money coming in and think, oh, I could do this and this and this. The opportunities open up, but you gotta remain focused. The more money you make, the more focused you have to be in terms of where your time is best spent. For Caleb, it's here on the channel. Spend it on the channel. I'm 90% sure I'm not gonna do it from this conversation. I just, I'm getting access to a deep dive on their numbers in a few days, and I just like, what if all of a sudden there's this, <laughs> I, I hope you take that 90% into consideration. So good news, guys, but Caleb has told me he's 100% not going to be doing the franchise. It doesn't mean he's never going to do it. I just think right now, not an appropriate time. Maybe at some point in the future, he's going to do it when he has FU money and he can just light it on fire and see what happens. But right now, we did it. 100% no franchise. I think that's the right choice. You had us picked up at the airport with a Lincoln Navigator. It's excessive. I, I, it is. I Only think, for you. <laughs> I think for your guests, you could wow them if they're flying in to come on the show, but not for Jack and I. Like, we would have been happy with an Uber. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was excessive. You know what? I don't like being pampered when I show up to places. It makes me feel uncomfortable because it's like, I don't want you to waste the money on it. Like, you know, sure, if it was Caleb picking me up in the airport, I'd be all for it. But it's like paying money. I don't know. I just don't like the paying money aspect of it. I'm like, ah, we would have been just fine in a, in a Toyota Prius picking us up. Like, that would have been fa fantastic. I would have been happy with that. Objectively, I saw that, and I would have rather you would save the money. Well, <laughs> plus, <laughs> also, you guys haven't been able to get my on a plane. Yeah, because, true. So I'm like, yeah. all right, you know, treat them a little. Yeah. Yes, this is true. We've invited Caleb to Las Vegas so many times. And listen, he's busy running the show, and he has a bit of a panic uh, disorder that we'll talk about a little bit you know, towards the end of the video, but I, I get it, but you know, tr trying to get in Vegas, he's gotta come to Vegas. When you're on an airplane or in an area where I just can't get to my like escape place, it's just like, it's an overwhelming phobia that I've allowed to build over the years. And yeah. since I've allowed it to build and it just gets worse and worse and worse, I just get anxious when I'm in situations I can't control. So I was nervous about being nervous. So I think therapy would be fantastic. I think I mentioned that here, but I, th I think working through those issues, getting over it, th the level of accomplishment that he'll get from being able to, to overcome that I think would be tremendous. Like if you think he's tapped his potential now, just imagine when he gets over that fear, can conquer it. That, that confidence I think is gonna carry over to everything else and the opportunities that come with being able to travel like this, I think are gonna be monumental. When you get the intrusive, uh, intrusive, ah, I can't say. It. When you get the intrusive, intrusive, <laughs> intrusive. intrusive, when you get the intrusive thoughts, uh, it teaches you how to let them go. Oh gosh, I wanted them to cut that out. And he's like, dude, if I'm talking about my hinge profile and my anxiety, you're leaving that in there. And I was like, oh, fine. For some reason, I could not say intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts. Now I could say it, intrusive. I, for some reason, just like kept coming out of my mouth. And the more I tried to say it, the worse it got. And then I got nervous and I'm like, ugh, intrusive, intrusive thoughts, intrusive. It, now I can't say anymore, intrusive thoughts. 
You try saying that five times. It's difficult. Why a lot of Jimmy John's? Well, business? Is so that just on like long business days lunches? of work, it's just usually what, like, I'll get that for dinner and then I'll get back to work and stuff like that. See, my thing would be doing a healthy meal plan. There's so many great options out there. Cook Unity uh, recently sponsored the podcast, and they're fantastic. They send you these really fresh meals. You get to pick them. Uh, they're, they're sent to you. There's like a week's worth of food. They're healthy. You know exactly what's in it. This video is not sponsored by Cook Unity, but... I will uh, share a link. Uh, for, well, I guess it's the iced coffee hour link. Whatever. I'll share that link there. Um, they're fantastic. I really enjoyed them, but I think a product like that would help Caleb. So munches on that. It's going to be cheaper than Jimmy John's, healthier with more options. I think that would be fantastic. Thirty-seven thousand three hundred thirteen dollars. Yes, sir. They're at four percent. So minimum monthly payments, so they're paid off. I, I feel like it's a not a waste, but yeah kind of, of $37, $37,000 to just throw it at it if I'm going to get average 10 point whatever with dividends reinvested in the S&P 500 on average. Yeah, I mean, part of me thinks, though, he's able to get some sort of a tax write-off, I guess, based on his mortgage. Not so much on this. So I would be looking at his like net cost when he accounts for all of his investments out there where he's really using the cash if it's worth it to pay out the student loan or not. 4%, not tax deductible. You know, that's the equivalent to paying more like a six and a half interest rate in his tax bracket before tax. So it's like, would you pay six and a half percent tax deductible or four percent untax deductible? It's about the same thing. So I would generally say pay it off at his income, let it be done, move on from it. It's not worth it. It's not worth thinking about it. I just get rid of it. Well, I get a couple matches here and there. Yeah. Lovely people. And then uh, the I guess it matches, but yeah. then the conversations just die so quickly. Why? Like I try to keep engaged and I send the last message and then people just don't message back. I don't know. That's always what it is, okay? Some of it is the fact that like, hey, when you're a female on a dating app, you're gonna be inundated with messages. You have too many messages to respond to. So it's a simple fact that like, if you get 100 messages, you're only gonna respond to a few of them. If your messages are not top tier, if they're not in like the top percentile of messages, it's like you're not getting a response. So the fact that you even get a response to begin with is like good, but uh, yeah, usually ghosting is just like, you know, you don't seize the moment. You're not sending good messages. You're not captivating. You're not witty enough. You're not funny enough. You're not conveying your sense of humor. You're not conveying your personality. There's a lot of things that go into that. So this is your main picture? Mm -hmm. I hate it. <gasps> you with a banana. It's fun. No, there's two people in the photo with a banana. They have no idea which one you are. They can't even see your face. This is so stupid. If I'm looking through Hinge and I see like just photo after photo and this, I come across this one, it's not eye catching at all. There's a banana in it. it. It's not funny to me. And I just see like one, no one's looking at the camera. To me, it's so confusing. I just immediately, just based on this, no, just absolutely not. A special talent of mine is being able to do a Morgan Freeman impression in British. It was, it's like this. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Morgan Freeman. What is that? I thought it was funny. It doesn't sound anything like him. No, it doesn't. That's the joke, though. I don't get it. I'm sorry. I think I'm the only one who doesn't understand it. I get that it's supposed to be so bad that it's funny, but there's a lot of things that are so bad that it's just, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. It's not my cup of tea. Life I'll partner, just put it for my job. Uh, I guess where this photo was taken. Okay. Alter ego. Uh, see, the other photos are good. You need a better photo than that. Yeah, that's a terrible photo, terrible. It seems like he's leaning too much into the YouTube thing, like him with the play button. I don't know. I wouldn't even show that. Like, I think it speaks volumes the less you talk about certain things like this. Like, the less you talk about your accomplishments, I think, the more they stand on their own and the more impressive it is. Like, I tend to gravitate towards the people don't talk about anything they're doing at all. It's just, you know it, if, if you know it, but, you know, if they don't say anything, it, to me, that's more powerful. She says, you're braver than you look. Yeah. You respond back, what can I say? I enjoy some risk. How do you Franchising. <laughs> <laughs> See, that makes the other person think too much. Like, if I'm female and I'm going through these messages, and there's one message that comes out like this. There's not asking a question, nothing. And I'm like, oh, this takes too much mental time to think about something to respond to that. And then I'm responding of like, ha ha, or whatever. I'm just going to respond to somebody else instead. So I think this one, DOA. No, that sounds amazing. Seriously, it's so good. Maybe a fun idea for a first date. Way too forward. I'm a forward mother. No. She knows nothing about you. Your first, all she knows is that you're into pickles. 
She has nothing to go off of. Yeah, way too soon. I mean, that to me just seems like you're shaking your hand and be like, all right, you want to get married? No, it's just like it's way too much too soon. Caleb's making too much of an upfront investment without making her work for it at all. I mean, there's no hoops that she has to jump through. There's nothing that she has to prove. It's just like, hey, here we go. You're, you're, you're done. Look, I pick you. She's like, you don't even know me. What if I'm weird? What if I'm creepy? So from my perspective, it's just, no, uh-uh. He's too willing to go on a first date with someone he doesn't know. I've been here for five years, but yeah, very hot. Still much prefer winters up there. Fair enough. That's really cool. Yeah. What brings you on here? What do you mean, what brings you on here? She's uh -huh. single. But yeah, I don't like the two hearts here. I, I think the fewer emojis, the better. Like maybe a laughing emoji every now and then, but go light on the emojis. The fewer the emojis, the better. You're just incredibly gorgeous. So I just, no, come on. What? So it's all I gorgeous. Are you not interested? You're oh. just so gorgeous. So oh. I just, no, <laughs> you, when you, oh, come on. Kill me. This is terrible. Terrible. So after two double texts, then the you're gorgeous. Oh, no wonder like this. No, uh-uh. It, it just screams desperate to me. And, and, and she's sensing it on the other end. It's like double texting. So it's obviously she's on his mind already. The fact that you have to double text is like this guy's thinking about her when she's probably not even, you know, thinking about him at all. So he's stacking the points and then the gorgeous bit. It's like a compliment's not going to win her over at that point. Dude, you're Caleb Hammer. You, okay. have, you have the world okay. at your disposal. Okay. You well, can, anybody you want. You should be, right. don't I win like with the, it. I like you the, are pick, the picker. but other people no, pick from too. now on, from now on, oh, you are the picker. you want me to act as the yes. picker. Yes, yes. Okay. You gotta be the buyer, not the seller. In this circumstance, Caleb is the seller. He is trying to put his best foot forward and showcase himself. And I understand, the guy in the dating world, like you're gonna have to sell a little bit, but if you come at it from the perspective of, I'm the buyer, it's up to me to pick the person who I want to be with. It's up to me to figure out what I want in my life and not compromise on that. So if he goes into it based on why should I be with you, it's just a different dynamic change. I think it'll help. When did you move here? Would you like to try to get dinner or coffee before you start the traveling? See, this to me seems like she just told you she's not interested. Yeah, I, and then I, it's I like, did not read that correctly. And then it was just yeah. like, so let's go out then. Yeah, that was too much. I mean, here's the thing, he's already lost. He's not losing any more besides his dignity at this point. <laughs> just, his, just dignity. Just that's it. But you know what? If you don't care, <laughs> yeah, there's a one in a million chance you'll say yes to that. One in a million. But hey, you know what? You can also win the lottery. Okay, so my income is out there. I also don't want anyone to date me because they're of that not position. going to. They're not going no? to. No. Oh, okay. Oh, a lot of gosh, people have no. warned me of that. If they know me from YouTube, then they know. I'm very frugal. I'm not the yeah. type of guy if they want someone to spend a whole bunch True. of money. Yeah, here's the thing. It's just like, if you're worried about gold diggers, don't don't spend money on them then. You know, then they go away. It's it's like, uh, you know, you got an ant problem. T take away the source of the food and the ants go away. You know, you don't need to be worried about ants if you're not leaving food out. So it's like, don't spend more money. Don't get the impression that you're attracting that. So don't lead with money. Don't lead with, oh, I'm gonna, you know, pick her up in my Lamborghini. I'm gonna take her to Mastro's on the beach. And like, as long as you don't lead with those things, it's not gonna be a problem. I tend to think a lot of that comes from guys who are like, yeah, let me pick her up in my sports car. We're gonna go to the club. I'm gonna drop $10,000. We're gonna go like this, my penthouse. Like, that. Well, then that's what you attract. You attract what you put out. I would love a lovely someone to eventually share it with. Now, now you're selling. Remember, uh -oh. you're being the seller again. Now, now you're saying, this is what I have to offer. Come pick me. Okay. Not, not hey, guys. I'm right so here. this is what my financial audit has turned into. <laughs> I read the comments. Seems like people really like the, the hinge breakdowns. I would love to start doing that, just breaking down dating profiles. I had, I had so much fun doing that with Jack. <laughs> I think uh, he's. I think he's over it. But uh, I would love. I would love just to do like dating profile breakdowns. I, I would be into that. I sold ten percent of my company. Really? Yeah. Because at that time it was making like ten thousand dollars a month. Very oh, anxious and nervous. But and this is where you'll be happy. I put a clause in there. If the channel continued to do well, I sold ten percent for twenty five thousand dollars at that time. Again, it was just an anxiety move. It was just mm -hmm. a bad move. Yeah, see, it seems like Caleb has this problem with, with making moves based on anxiety or just like impulsiveness. If he could just put a delay on his decisions by two months, 60 days. So any major thing he wants to do, someone's got to stop him and say, okay, you could do it, but we're putting a pause on it for two months. After two months, if you want to do it, you can. That would solve so many things for Caleb. Just a two-month delay. 
that needs to be a thing. Well, thank you so much. That is my advice for you. Don't be stupid with your money. Play it safe. Double down, I think, on what you're doing. Be creative here. And uh, get better with your texting game. So that's my overall thought. I want to do another follow-up episode with Caleb in like six months from now. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button. Um, I would also love to do a, a joint financial audit with Caleb. I think that would be a lot of fun as well. We got to get Caleb to come to Vegas. So comment to Caleb to come to Vegas. Hit the like button, subscribe. Oh, and don't forget that you can get some free stocks worth all the way up to a few thousand dollars when you make any deposit using the paid affiliate link down below in the description. Enjoy that because that's a pretty good ROI for like 10 minutes worth of work. You get some free stocks, get invested. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.